we've talked about the importance of focusing on outcomes, that in the early stages, helping a team become productive, put some points on the board, and once we've established some momentum of success, then we can see what are the residual relationship issues that need to be addressed. Why don't we take a minute and just talk about what are those residual relationships that we do see, relationship issues that we do see, and what are some of the things that we do to actually address them? So on the relationship piece, it's, it's an important point. There are a whole number of things teams can do, but let's point to a few. One of the ones that starts to emerge when teams start to work together is the realization that maybe they don't know each other enough. So there's a reorientation towards what we call identity and integration work. And what that means is, do we really know each other? Do we have an idea of where we come from, what our paths are, the strengths and weaknesses that we have? So it's a it, it, it's really a set of exercises around getting to know each other and that can be done at work or outside of work. And it leads to work around integration which is beyond what we think we know, how else can we contribute to each other and to the team? Contribution, adding value, being there, what more can I do? Those two conversations expand our understanding of each other which expands our appreciation for each other. And what it breaks is what we typically call the personal narrative I think I know who you are and therefore I have you in a box and I have a story about you and that's who you are for me and this team. The identity and integration work actually expands that narrative sometimes to something completely new and that can increase more energy and cohesion in the team. So is that bringing in a deeper sense of kind of humanity and personality and personal relationship into the team equation? It is and again it can be done at work in, in work sessions or it can be done in what we call the social aspects of the team. So a second piece there is how social is the team? Do team members have coffee together? Do they have lunch together? Do they ever have dinner together? Now some teams don't like that but at a minimum do you meet outside the meetings? Do you spend time talking or chit-chatting in the hallway? Do you have a lunch? And those are important aspects of what we call the social piece where we interact, we talk, we get to know each other and it can be professional and it can be a touch personal. So one of the things I found most useful in teams is understanding people's personalities and mm. the working styles that correspond to those. Something as basic as the fact that some people think out loud and mm. some people don't. And the minute you just understand these as aspects and traits of a person versus taking it personally, immediately the cohesion goes up. Mm. So if a team sits down and says, okay, for each person, these are the this is when I thrive, these are the areas in which I struggle, and when this happens, what do I need and how can you help? Immediately, a lot of just conflict that happens due to people being different goes away. So from personal experience, I can say that it's a huge positive in creating good team dynamics. I think that's a great point, and this is not something that's just a nice add-on to help people feel good, but it actually really does contribute to the effectiveness and the efficiency of teamwork. Because otherwise, you can have these misunderstandings, you can have these unnecessary conflicts, and you can also have this distraction. If you haven't worked through, like Alexander was talking about, the issues of identity, you know, the sense of who am I on this team? Do people see me for who I am? Where do I fit in? How do I relate? Do I really belong? That's something that's always sort of noise in people's heads, noise in team members' heads that prevents them from really being fully immersed in the team and knowing how to work in the most effective way. So it's worth that investment in the beginning or if you notice things aren't going well because it hasn't been resolved, later on, whenever it comes up, we've found that it is almost always effective to go there. You know, one of the things that you'll find in, in, in teams that are, that are performing at high levels is that when you watch them work, there's actually energy and there's joy and there's a sense of buoyancy. So you'll walk into a, a, a team meeting and you'll see that people are actually high-fiving, they're smiling, there's laughter, they're working hard, but you don't feel like it's heavy and serious. Actually, it's quite the opposite. And interestingly, it's very attractive. You might find yourself saying, wow, I'd like to be a part of that. That's an interesting place to play. So let's not forget that. And that really is up to the team to find ways to bring that energy and that humor into the room without fear of consequence. I think a big part of it is that when you can relax and you know mm -hmm. that the team will perform, it takes a big burden off your shoulders. And the minute the burden is off your shoulders, 
you can breathe, you can have fun, and you can actually enjoy the process because you trust that the goal will be at least, will be, if not fully achieved, you're doing your best to get there. And it leads to another point about relationship, which is as that starts to happen, a very interesting phenomenon occurs, is that team members start to feel the permission mm -hmm. to give each other feedback, to speak their truth to each other about the process, about the work, about what's going on. And when in team members start to give voice to what's true for them, then the team opens up. And if you drop in a couple of conflict management or feedback protocols, processes to help them do that, then that even becomes effective. And the team enters into a state of performance, and that's when they hit that, uh, that truly miraculous place. And when they start to experience it, like, wow, this is so cool. Because we're getting work done, we're really cohesive, it's energetic, I like my team. In the end, it's a pretty cool experience. And that can happen. So the relationship piece is super important.